Okay, hello my good friends. It's Roger once again from Mud Fossil University. And uh, they made a couple changes on uh, YouTube. So when you come here from now on, what you're going to find is, uh, I believe you're going to see this right, and it's going to start into uh, one of our most recent videos or uh, this one here in this case. Now, uh, so click on videos here and it will display all the videos that we have uh, here on uh, Mud Fossil University. Now, you see here, this one here, Universality Study. Go up there and look into this one. But I'm, I'm going to go through this quickly because I want to go into sonoluminescence today. This talks about the universality principle, uh, which is going to be incorporated into sonoluminescence, which you're going to have to understand as well. But that gives you a lot of detail. So let's talk about sonoluminescence today, but we'll also be including the uh, matter, because you have to understand matter before you can understand sonoluminescence. Alright, so let's go into sonoluminescence. Alright, I'm going to show you a series of pictures that are extremely important and show exactly the nature of light. This is the red light from a pulsed red laser, and that is in, in midair, taken by uh, Rodney Warren in uh, Australia. Now, that was just unmolested red laser light. Now look at this. Look at this. The same disc, only this time it's being sucked into this device right here, which Rodney inadvertently created, which is a Venturi acceleration device. And it consists of two nails, literally construction nails. Boom, boom. And he had them in such a distance apart that when the light struck it, the circular orifice caused that light to crush itself into that little tiny slot, creating what's called a venturi and atomization. And when it did, he was able to pick up pictures of this in exquisite detail, which I will show you in a second. And some of them are absolutely astounding and one of a kind and fully display the nature of light. So now we can see that light is no longer just a wave coming across here. It can be compressed and sucked and turned into literal chaos, which it is. And, and you'll see this in a second. And so, so what I'm getting at is this isn't a wave. This is a particle because these are particles and you'll see these particles. So let's go on to the next pictures here. Hold on one second. Before we go on, I just want to make sure you understand, this is accelerated light now. This is not like, you can see it's accelerating. It's not just going, it's going, I'm, got him, I'm, I'm out of here. Look at it. It's like going to a freaking rocket ship. When it hits there, that is hitting and creating enormous chaos of electrons. And they are spinning as a circle here. And they, they spin with this, just like this. made this little spring to show you the, the effect that it has. Looking at, 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 they call it a wave and a particle. Well, it is. It's both. If you look at it from the side, it's a wave. And a very f extremely fast frequency wave like this would be spinning a zillion times a second because it goes the same distance from here to here at the same time. But this one does it like this. It only has about 10 loops. This one has a hundred loops by the time it crosses that much distance. That means this one's spinning ten times faster or whatever it is. But this angular momentum of the spin is the impact of the electron and that is what energy is. It's the only thing it is. It's going forward and it's spinning at the same time. And those two things make up mass. Mass is the forward motion of a particle, and that particle is an electron in this case. There are nuclear particles, and electrons can be divided. Electrons can be divided. These are electrons. Now I'm going to show you something else. I'm going to show you, I'm just going to show you because I can't explain it until I show you. Okay, this is the chaos right above, uh, uh, well this is a shot from right above the uh, 
accelerator right here. This white is the uh, accelerated light. It's going faster than the speed of light, which is supposedly not going to be able to do, which is very easy to do. And it can go slower than the speed of light. So it's, it's crazy about the speed of light thing. Now, the white is uh, extremely glowy and extremely chaotic, and it buzzes and sizzles, Rodney says, audibly, bzzz, when, when he's doing this. And he can see, but well, you can see, there's the white, and then it goes to the yellow, and then it goes to the red, and it trails off. Now, I'm going to show you some other shots of light. This is directly above the uh, accelerator. Now, this is looking directly into the accelerator. You saw those little trails coming off of the other uh, shot. We're looking into them now. You see these spinning discs? They're spinning so fast that I believe, now, this is my assessment of the situation, is that the, this is one particle going zzzz, and, and and we can see its path and it's it's like little well you can see you can see what I see there are little dots in there and that, that must be little potentials little little positive negative positive negative positive you know something like that it's spinning spinning now you can see two different colors you see that that's a denser deeper shorter duration spin thicker, heavier, maybe more impact. And they come out of this accelerator in all different different speeds, in different intensities, in different power. And you can see it. Like you see that little dot right there? That one there is coming out of there. That one came out and must have crashed something and paramed off and it has extra power. And I'll show you when it has extra power, a white one like that, and hit hit one of these discs right here and it split the, it, 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 well you're gonna see should be some kind of drum roll or something for this. This is the most important picture that's ever been taken in the history of science. Because nobody understands matter, they don't understand light, they don't understand energy, they don't understand any of this stuff. We're going to go into sound and luminescence next, and, 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 but this you have to understand first. You see that little spot there? I showed you those accelerated little particles, and I showed you that little white dot that was going out there. Well, that little white dot is an accelerated one of these. And it's so accelerated you can't see it until it crashed into this disc in its accelerated form and then started to slow down. See it? All of a sudden it showed up like a ghost here. And what happened is there's accelerated excess power here. When it impacted with here, it st sent off this little light trumpet. And that little light trumpet is a piece of one of these. It propagated it by itself. So my statement is, and I, I can't see anybody uh, able to uh, to speak against this. We've seen that the particles accelerate. I showed that. I, there's no question that's happening. In my mind, you can't show it isn't. You can only say, oh, that's just guess. No, it's not. You can see it and you can see it. So don't come along with that stuff. Now, here's the powerful little spot. And I have tons of uh, more pictures to show you to prove this in many 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 ways it hits here and it spit off that this is not something that's not this you can't it's, it's unimpeachable you cannot deny this so it's time for someone at MIT or somewhere to look at this I've sent this to everybody and they they won't even correspond with me one guy's the only thing he said oh it could be anything and he hung up on it so they're just trying to protect their image and themselves and their jobs and their status and their their uh, time off and, and all that business. And it's not right. And it's not up to. It's not. It's not about them. This is about reality. So if they can come up with some solution for this, I'm just lying. Well, call me a liar. Show them a liar. I'm saying this is fact. Alright, I'm not going to go into this deep because I do have a deep video on MFU about it. It's called, I believe it's uh, MFU Studies Universality or something like that. But what really is happening is the sun is spitting out a, a particle, and it's a particle. And when it leaves out of here, it's the, it's the, it's the electron that's attached to the nucleuses, the little bits that are sitting around the, the atom, and they get so excited they just leave, and they get thrown out just like a, a rocket leaving. And some of them are spinning real fast, some of them are spinning slow. They spin because they have polarities, and, and in my other video I go into that deeply. Now, in space they don't hit anything, they're dark matter and dark energy. 
and because they are negatives they stay away from each other until they hit like the space station and light up or they hit the atmosphere and then they start to turn into heat and light and, and, and do all the things they do on earth and by the way they are growing earth exponentially fast you have to understand their particles they're dark energy dark matter in space when they hit the earth they combine with the molecules that are on the earth to feed the earth literally feed the earth and literally feed the plants you see the plants grow only when the light hits it and it's light and it doesn't matter whether it's light from the sun or it's light from uh, a spotlight that's just the way it works plants will grow when they are fed electrons and you can do them with the, the, in the dark you know with, with batteries it's just a fact it's called electroculture so let's watch this again. They're going to show how this happens. What they do is they send frequencies in here. And when they meet just the right way, it forces this bubble to explode open. It shakes the, the, the molecule so violently that they lose control and, and, and they just pop open. And the bubble expands. That's the only thing I can ex explain it by. All right, so let's listen to what they're doing. And this sound wave makes the bubble do something remarkable. First it expands, then it collapses. And this collapse happens so violently that vapor molecules trapped inside the bubble slam together and heat up so much that the bubble gives off an incredible burst of heat and light several thousand times a second, giving the appearance of a star. All right, but I don't see why you couldn't put an electrode in here and take that out instead of letting it glow. They want to go down to fusion where, and, and they very well might. And But the thing is, what you need to do in here is to experiment with the different types of gases in here. Like maybe some um, noble gases that can't, that, that you have to shake so violently that, I, I really don't know. But I would try all different types of gases and I would pressurize the whole outside of this thing or I would depressurize it and, and you put it as a vacuum and I believe some of the experiments they say that they put a negative five atmospheres in the vessel and it it, it does a better the, the bubble comes open better and so forth whatever something like that but I would try in every different configuration try it with different person apparently the other thing that I have been led to believe is that water is the it, it, distilled water is the preferred medium here and they tried with other different glycol different things and and uh, water which is very very dense you know water is extremely dense h2o it's hydrogen which two hydrogens and one oxygen oxygen and two hydrogens you almost got nothing there they were doing the tiniest molecules there is that's why it's the universal solvent it can squeak in almost anywhere. The only thing that's smaller really I think is OH minus. Anyway, um, there might be something else. But anyway, th 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 I think this could be played with at least. I'd love to be able to do some of these experiments. I don't have any stuff to do it with, but I got a feeling they may have something here. And, and there are people that seem to be willing to do this. So if somebody is willing, uh, you know, try it. I mean, I don't want anything. I don't, I'm not looking to capitalize on this at all. And I, I, all I ever want to do is put things out there for somebody to take a look at. I can't do these things. I can't do this. So I'm just showing it. But it, it shows promise to me. And uh, that's how I would proceed. Is different gases, different pressures, and uh, different frequencies, that's all you can do. But it might have problems, that's my point. Okay, we saw the way frequency can force a bubble to, to vibrate violently. Well, explosions underwater have exactly the same effect. They, they open up a cavity and it collapses. And these guys are the slow motion guys. Very, very cool stuff. Where do you see this? I'm, I'm going to let them do it. Watch this and, and then we'll try to... Uh, there's a couple spots I have to stop and show you. A little funk. Smells good. Ready? Yeah. 
Oh, it's just not. All right, now wait, stop right there. Okay, now, you see that? You saw the thing pop open, and now it looks like it's just everything's fine, a little bubble. My statement is, again, could be totally wrong, is that there is a mass of electrons that is not part of the nuclear sort of matter that's in there, because they're so pulled apart that the nucleus is have lost control of their electrons there and, and and they're trying to get more electrons and and the water is able to feed electrons because water is just loaded with them and it just goes right in there and feeds this and watch what happens now okay now you see that you see that there's a process going on here between this layer of uh, electrons. I'm saying those electrons. That's my statement. I could be wrong. Forcing their way or, or, or being sucked in by the nucleuses trying to reform themselves down to the size of the bubble that it started with, which was nothing. There was nothing there. There was a firecracker in there. All right, so let's continue on and see what happens. Okay, you see that? It came back so fast, and as soon as it hit, the electrons are gone. It's like the, the light comes back as it comes Done. in. Done. It's like all the It's all over. It's been recompressed into it. All right, so that's my statement. I could be wrong, but I could be wrong. Anyway, these guys were pretty cool. I like the way they do things. They got the underwater explosion, 120,000 frames per second. I did video equipment. Um, long ago we were at 28 frames a second we thought that was fast <laughs> well not fast fast but it was you know you could see things but this is incredible anyway I, now so what what could you get out of this a couple of possibilities there could be there could be um electricity you saw it that flash that light is electricity i don't care what anybody says so light is electricity it's just a fact when it hits these electric panels and stuff like that, it turns into electricity. Light is electricity. It hits plants and they grow. But they're growing because it is electricity. It's little particles hitting them and feeding the plants. Literally, that's a fact. And there's nobody can dismiss that. So, maybe we get something out of this. Who knows?